When a young Brazilian student died after being tasered by police in Sydney, his family was naturally devastated. But until tonight, those mourning the death of Roberto Laudicio have remained silent. Now, the 21-year-old's Brazilian family has spoken out for the first time, calling for an explanation of the tragedy and justice. Tracy Bowden reports. The huge metropolis of Sao Paulo, Brazil, the city that Roberto Laudicio Curti called home. It was here that his extended family heard the terrible news. Thousands of kilometres away, the 21-year-old student had died on a Sydney street after being tasered by police. Security cameras captured the final moments of his life. Roberto was chased by six policemen and they didn't catch him, so what they did, they sprayed capsicum and not enough, tasered him three times. Why? It's really difficult. I really think it's a, a tragedy in my life, actually my first tragedy. Uh, and, and I think I have just to keep going. I think he didn't deserve it. Eduardo Ladicio grew up side by side with his cousin. He was like, for me, like my brother, because unfortunately he lost, the, he lost his parents early. Uh, so we got so close. And, and because of this, almost everything we did together in our lives. The events leading up to Roberto's death are unclear. It started as a fun evening out with friends, but just before dawn, he was in the city alone. What happened next will be explored in a coronial inquiry. But shortly after 5 a.m., police were called to this convenience store in King Street. These images show a man trying to get behind the store's counter. Staff later told 7.30 the man appeared agitated. Soon after, another security camera showed the police pursuing Roberto around the corner in Pitt Street. He looked so afraid and so worried. And for me, when you look some someone that is afraid or worried, you, you have to help him and not kill him, you know what I mean? It was a tragedy which resonated on two continents. In Brazil, people took to the streets demanding justice. Outside the Australian consulate, they protested with biscuits after claims their friend had stolen a packet from the convenience store. In Sydney, friends and supporters gathered at Bondi Beach to remember their friend. I want to say as an Australian, Roberto, I'm very sorry for the way that you died. In the days after Roberto's death, there was much speculation and many questions. Where had he been that night? Was he on drugs? Why was he tasered? Yet those who knew him best, his friends and family, had little to say. So far, um, people just refuse to talk. So even when you ask, um, well, can you please talk about him as a, as a friend? And it's, um, you know, hard to get any information on the records. It was only after months of negotiations that Roberto's uncle in Brazil agreed to speak to 7.30 about his much-loved nephew. Six cops versus a boy. Six cops chasing him. Easy catch. His biggest fear is a lack of transparency in the investigations. We don't know the names of the six cops who chased him. We don't know the names of the cops who chased him. Roberto Ladicio Curti was just like the tens of thousands of students who come to Australia to study English and enjoy the lifestyle. His English was not that great. He has a sister who is married to an Australian and she's living in Sydney. And she has been there for over two years now. So the sister invited him to come and live with her in Australia while he was studying English. 
Living with his sister and brother-in-law in Balmain in Sydney's Inner West, Roberto was studying English and helping out at a local cafe. He was very friendly, obviously the language barrier, but you could tell he really wanted to learn more and um, he wanted to learn about, you know, working here and um, wanted to learn a skill. Did you get any sense that he, he was partying a lot? No more than any other, you know, average 21-year-old boy would. I mean, certainly no, no more than me when I was 21, that's for sure. He was also soccer mad and was playing with the local club. He was a very enthusiastic guy, very respectful. I remember first three sessions, uh, he made me quite uncomfortable because he kept calling me sir and nobody in the squad calls me sir, everybody calls me Franco. Everybody, lot to play for today. Um, we've got the armbands on for a reason, we're going to have a minute silence of the kickoff of the game. His um, soccer team wore black armbands in his memory in the weeks after Roberto's death. And coach Franco Polistina told 7.30 that Roberto played two games of soccer on the Saturday afternoon. And he's angered by claims the student had been on a two-day bender. You know, he was with us from quarter to 12 or so the guys said he got there till we disbanded as a group at quarter to six and and didn't show any signs of being I don't know hung over or, or on, on anything he didn't show any any of those sorts of signs. Domingos Ladicio says that speculation about whether his nephew used recreational drugs misses the point. I don't know if Robert has taken drugs or not but if he had that does not justify at all to be killed by police. This kid was fit. He was a soccer player, he was fit. For him to go down, there has to be something wrong with these taser systems. Too much voltage, something. They have to really look at it and really try to study what happened here. This is a, a disaster. Taser, taser! The incident prompted a renewed debate about the safety and use of tasers. Domingos Laudicio has done some research of his own. In Brazil, about half of the states police use taser, but they have a very strict rule, just one shot. That's it. No more than one shot. And second, just the, the cop who is in the command, not all the cops. Roberto Ladicio's body underwent an autopsy in Sydney and it was four long weeks before the family could return him to Brazil and say their final farewells. The New South Wales Ombudsman is overseeing a police investigation into what happened and a coronial inquiry is set down to begin in October. Roberto Ladicio Curti's family says all they can ask for is justice. I expect that everybody who are going to deal with this incident with Roberto to demonstrate that they can be trusted, to demonstrate that they have integrity, and to demonstrate that they are fair. That's what I expect. Tracy Bowden reporting.